okay but uh, uh, let me try if if you hear me then it would be okay i can start the workshop and then give the, the mic to speakers yes you can Is it okay now? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So, uh, can I start then? Yes, you can. You can start. Maya, you can start. I don't know if something is wrong. I will try to connect from the, my phone because here on the on this device is not. I don't know something is. You know, I it's interrupting all the time, and I I don't hear half of what you're saying. Okay, but do you hear me? Is it? Is it the sound or is it something with the connection? Probably the connection because I hear you, but and then the, the, the video stops and I cannot hear you. So it's interrupting all the time. Okay. Um, but if you, if you start, then we can see what happens. Yes, okay. Uh, I hope that everyone is uh, hearing me, so I would like to uh, welcome you all to this uh, workshop about uh, crisis centers situation in Western Balkan and Turkey and uh, Istanbul Convention in the period of uh, pandemic with COVID-19. Uh, we all are witnesses to what happened uh, with this um, pandemic in the world. We had to change everything. We had to change our work, our way of work, uh, all the activities that we used to do uh, with physical presence before. Now it's uh, everything online. Um, I believe that as our crisis center uh, faced uh, many difficulties and challenges, also the other centers in the region faced uh, challenges and difficulties in this period. Um, I would uh, first like to, to give the opportunity to speakers uh, that prepared for this workshop and then afterwards we will have a discussion on, on what is the situation and what are the challenges and what are we going to do in the future about this. So uh, I would first like to invite Ms. Kasa from Albania. Diana, are you there? Okay, thank you, Maya. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, I'm here, Maya. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm honored to be part of this uh, workshop, Freya, and uh, to share with all of you uh, the situation uh, in Albania regarding the crisis center as I represent one of the organizations working in Albania for almost uh, 20 years on the field of uh, anti-trafficking of human beings and also on assisting uh, domestic, uh, all the women and the girls that have suffered from domestic violence and violence in the, in the families. So uh, I, I can share some of the crucial uh, things uh, together with you and then we can discuss. Uh, before uh, starting the, the crisis situation or let's say the pandemic situation, uh, we are engaged as organization in offering residential cent uh, uh, assistance to victims of trafficking that are minors. And uh, we are based on uh, acting based on uh, standard operation procedures in Albania meaning that uh, all the referral cases are coming uh, from the police state and, uh, and the state social services. 
and also we are part of the national coalition of the anti-trafficking shelters that are four in Albania in general and we are uh, the only one which is uh, offering assistance for minors. So uh, uh, cases are coming from uh, various uh, areas of Albania but based on the referral coming from the police or the state social services before, uh, you know, uh, they need to be categorized uh, as a potential victim or victims of trafficking. And then uh, in case they need assistance, residential or in distance, we are offering. While for uh, domestic violence, we have a, 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 a complex uh, centers, meaning that we have daily women centers where they can come and uh, take uh, assistance on uh, psychosocial uh, reintegration regarding the offering vocational education trainings. And also because we are licensed as, as organization and known from the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare uh, to offer this kind of trainings for them and also uh, uh, now we have started piloting for almost three years in offering also counseling for, uh, uh, for the men as abusers. You know, I don't know, maybe you have information regarding this uh, situation of uh, offering uh, assistance to men as abusers in Albania, but mostly the most experience is in Tirana. Uh, you know, the organization of Iris Luarasi, which uh, is offering this uh, kind of assistance, and also in uh, Škodra in the north, uh, uh, the, that is uh, offered from the organization uh, Women to Women. Now, this kind of experience is replicated in, 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 in Elbasan through the organization which I'm representing. I'll give you a short uh, uh, screen of the situation before starting with uh, the pandemic situation, uh, meaning that uh, uh, most of the cases uh, that are victims of domestic violence, when they go through this, uh, this violence, uh, women and, uh, and uh, their children go back, uh, go from or uh, go away from the from the home, from houses. And uh, it is a very uh, emergent situation to to offer them uh, residential assist assistance. In Elbasan, the city where I am uh, located with the office, uh, we are offering all the emergency uh, assistance to these uh, women uh, and uh, their children who have uh, uh, pass through all this situation of violence. So uh, they should stay only 48 or 72 hours and then they should uh, be transferred to the National uh, Center in Tirana or we should find alternative uh, cases for their uh, accommodation in other uh, centers. Uh, while for victims of trafficking, this is resolved because uh, we have uh, the, the shelter uh, which is offering uh, uh, the whole uh, accommodation package and uh, reintegration also. I should say that uh, one of the challenges that we are facing so far is that uh, uh, when it is given the order of protection, uh, protection or order of immediate order of protection for the cases who uh, should stay uh, at the at home together with uh, with uh, abusers, it has become very very difficult because they have to share the the same areas uh, and meaning that they go through conflicts again and again which asks, in fact, uh, uh, a long-term monitoring uh, from the uh, local coordinators or the state social services in order to ensure that the order of protection uh, is uh, respected by the abusers. So this was one even of the recommendation given from, uh, from us uh, frequently to the, uh, to the local referral mechanism. Uh, also, another uh, challenge uh, that we have faced so far is that uh, uh, when the 
cases go through the divorce process and uh, we help them with uh, drafting uh, and you know uh, and going to the courthouse uh, for asking the divorce uh, after they have uh, had uh, long uh, term violence uh, the service, the psychological uh, service uh, in in the in the courthouse, it is very very expensive uh, it, because they should go through a uh, psychological and analyzing of the children, and uh, they should pay for this. Uh, this is one of the issues that is raised uh, many many times from all the NGOs uh in uh, in the local area where i am uh, working but also even in the national level so far we have created a, uh, a space for the for the courthouse uh, for all the psychologists that are free to offer this uh, assistance uh, and uh, they do have the license as well they belong to different ngos but still the courthouse in Elbasan is not accepting uh, the psychologists that uh, we are offering, but, uh, and still they have two or three psychologists that are doing this according to, uh, to this expensive payment. We have to find uh, spaces for payment of these uh, services through different projects because the state is not, uh, is not supporting on this case. Also, I should say that uh, regarding the identification of uh, victims of trafficking, minors, in, uh, in Albania there are, uh, let's say, this uh, phenomenon is very well uh, uh, treated from the, from the uh, national actors and also from the uh, state social services police, but uh, uh, so big support is given from the National Coalition of the Anti-Trafficking Shelters. We also have uh, established mobile units in uh, Elbasan, in Blora, and in south of, uh, of Albania, in Tirana, in Škodra, Dibra. So there are uh, six mobile teams that belongs to, to the National Coalition of Anti-Trafficking Shelters, who almost for seven years are playing the, law, the role of the identification and contacts with the local uh, actors in order to increase the identification in the hotspot areas of the, uh, of the cases that might be trafficked or also have uh, indicators uh, that uh, might be potential victims of trafficking. But uh, uh, all the cases that are referred to the national authorities, uh, we call it responsible authorities because we have to work uh, as a chain together with Ministry of Interior and, uh, and the state authorities for referring the victims of trafficking. Still, uh, we see that there are no, uh, no further uh, actions in order to investigate all the cases that we refer to them. So uh, still the cases are on the street, for instance, or you can see that some cases uh, end up uh, to be exploited. And uh, this is in fact an issue that still remains to be, uh, to be not just discussed, but uh, need the further intervention of all the actors, because it's not only the police or the state social service who should act, but also all the actors that are involved in the treatment of the, or the uh, war or fighting uh, uh, human being trafficking. Uh, despite the, the funds that we have, uh, uh, or the, the local government, like municipalities, uh, gives in local level for supporting the cases of uh, domestic violence women, uh, to give them economic uh, support, paying uh, the uh, for the like a uh, hiring uh, or a rent for an apartment for uh, at least one year, assisting their children for free in the, in the kindergarten 
or still remains one of the biggest problem, their long-term reintegration. And this comes because of their uh, economic situation and the dependency, economic dependency they have created uh, towards their uh, abusers, men, uh, perpetrators, if I, if I may say so. Also, another challenge uh, that was uh, registered in years uh, I, I am an uh, expert on, on, uh, in, res in the, in the research, research field on, on social uh, issues. And I have, uh, together with my colleagues, uh, drafted uh, the social uh, area plan for the municipality of Elbasan. And during this uh, work for, uh, for conducting, uh, for, uh, for drafting uh, these uh, documents, and based on a very in screening the situation, evaluating and assessing the situation in, in the area where I'm living, we see that uh, there is missing a coordination between uh, of the statistics, and uh, you know the the, the data bars uh, are different uh, from the administrative uh, units in municipality. Uh, they do not fit with the data so of, uh, from coming from the NGOs. So uh, that's why one of the recommendations that we gave to them was uh, a coordination or establishing and at first drafting and then establishing a database uh, well coordinated among all the actors in the local level and then in, in the national level. And this is because uh, they should serve to track all the trends or all the cases uh, that are registered and they ask help uh, and support from the state. So uh, these are some uh, main, uh, uh, let's say, uh, challenges that uh, we are facing so far, even before the, the situation uh, of the COVID-19. So, uh, what happened after uh, with, uh, with the situation of COVID, uh, a closing of uh, Albania as many countries in Balkan, but, but also in, 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 in Europe, uh, the situation becomes more difficult. Uh, I have done the monitoring of the municipalities uh, of a referral mechanism and their action during the pandemic situation from January to May. And uh, in Elbasan, in the center of Albania, and also in the southeast in Pogradets. And what I have, um, what I have uh, uh, seen and evaluated during this uh, monitoring is that uh, we have had uh, an increasing number of uh, cases with domestic violence that were referred through phones. I can give you some figures, like uh, the, in the municipality of Elbasan, during, from January to May, they were referred 60, 60 cases, mm -hmm. and which asked uh, uh, help uh, for support mm -hmm. because of the domestic uh, violence. Uh, and also uh, my organization, uh, registered uh, 66 cases of women which had had uh, very social economic problematic uh, issues but also 45 uh, percent of them did have problems with domestic violence uh, the reason are lots of it you know mm -hmm. but mostly because of the economic situation uh, losing their jobs uh, husbands were at home uh, you know, uh, also the emotional and uh, anxiety was increased and uh, only uh, from, from the, uh, another NGO that is also focused on uh, uh, counseling uh, women during this pandemic situation got 242 phone calls uh, for uh, supporting uh, during uh, the, the, this situation because uh, their stories showed that their uh, violence was increased. 
And we, I can tell you that these 242 phone calls were not from the Elbasan municipality, but from the whole region, the, meaning that uh, it shows that uh, the violence was uh, increased and uh, was becoming a, a very problematic uh, situation. Also, uh, what is very interesting to see during this period was that the number of uh, potential victims of trafficking, even that it uh, looks like the, the picture was like, you know, we are closed, uh, people were not moving out, uh, the traffickers, uh, the perpetrators were um, becoming too smart for starting new forms, new uh, shapes, uh, new trends of trafficking uh, people include here also children. We as uh, organization have assisted during this, uh, during this period, 24 potential victims of trafficking minors. And only this period, we got uh, six referrals uh, for assisting in the residential center and 11 cases identified from, from mobile teams in Elbasan and uh, in North of Albania. So I can say that uh, uh, even that was online uh, situation uh, because the referral came from, from uh, different uh, actors, different uh, NGOs, state social service police. Uh, we tried to support the cases as much as we can, uh, even within, uh, within the COVID uh, situation. Uh, there is, an, there is a question that do we have had uh, any support from the state and from the international organization? Uh, as might happen in, even in the other countries, there was a protocol uh, for, uh, especially for the uh, NGOs who had uh, residential centers uh, to respect uh, for the uh, uh, period, pandemic period of COVID-19, uh, meaning that uh, we couldn't uh, uh, accept uh, new cases without uh, having uh, an area as an emergency, meaning that they, uh, all the cases should stay in these emergency areas and then they should enter, uh, after 14 days, they should enter into the, into the services. This was very, very difficult to be, to be uh, done because uh, uh, we as NGOs uh, don't have too many uh, logistical capacities to, to offer such, uh, such things. So that's why I mentioned in the very beginning that uh, uh, the crisis center were not too many in, in, in Albania or in, uh, in the area where I'm working, meaning that uh, they first needed to open these crisis centers to, uh, to locate or to assist people and then to send to the, uh, to the services uh, they needed, like uh, our NGO. Uh, from the state, uh, to, to, to be frankly, you know, honest, <clears throat> we didn't have many, many support, meaning that uh, only from the local uh, government, which helped with uh, packages of food or, uh, as I mentioned before, with uh, hygienic packages for, for these uh, women, but mostly uh, the cases were uh, supported uh, from the uh, NGOs, from the international donors, and, uh, and from, you know, based on projects. So uh, only during uh, this period, January, May 22, 20, uh, uh, the, the, the national referral mechanism of, uh, of uh, Elbasan municipality uh, identified 36 cases which were helped with, uh, with food packages and hygienic uh, packages as well. Also, uh, they monitored 29 cases uh, that were uh, uh, carried from uh, 2019 uh, which also uh, closed their, their uh, short-term period of uh, order of protection and needed further support. We as an institution, as NGO, have had uh, support from the UNICEF uh, uh, based on a big project. Uh, money came from the uh, 
British government, uh, which was uh, appointed for uh, uh, anti-trafficking action in uh, north of Albania. And we are supporting all the cases uh, that are identified uh, all during this period. Uh, Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs of uh, Italy uh, he also is uh, giving a great support regarding the through through projects also uh, regarding the support for uh, victims of domestic violence in their uh, further integration meaning that uh, we are offering them uh, vocational education trainings or uh, internships into the businesses in order mm -hmm. to to learn uh, their job and uh, we also had uh, other uh, projects from different uh, from different organization mm -hmm. so uh, to conclude and uh, and, uh, and to give uh, 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 an overview of the situation in Ar uh, albania about uh, uh, about uh, mm -hmm. that how the istanbul convention is implemented in albania uh, I should say that, uh, in fact, uh, uh, there ha there has been some improvement, especially on the on the legal framework. Recently, mm -hmm. we have had uh, uh, changes uh, as uh, from in the in the uh, law against the domestic violence, uh, which uh, now uh, gives the priority to women and uh, the ch the children in the in the in the house and uh, they will uh, take out uh, from the house and uh, leave the, the women in, in at home uh, and also a uh, very good uh, point it uh, which is uh, now uh, within these uh, uh, changes in in the, in the law is that uh, uh, all the judges in the courthouse uh, will uh, force or obligate uh, the, the uh, abusers to take uh, rehabilitation services uh, because before it was based on uh, the desire of the of the of the judges. Uh, now it is an obligation, and they should go to the program of the rehabilitation in order to uh, to treat uh, all these uh, symptoms of uh, abusing and know uh, where it is coming from. Uh, so uh, we are very satisfied with these uh, changes in the in the law, and hope that it will work. Also, uh, uh, in uh, uh, October. Uh, 2019 in Elbasan, it was uh, open for the first time. The office uh, of uh, free legal aid uh, established in uh, Elbasan municipality, meaning that all the uh, citizens, especially women and children that are under the domestic violence uh, situation, can have uh, for free uh, this uh, uh, legal aid. And even that uh, in Elbasan, we do have NGOs that are offering for free. Uh, we have uh, uh, lawyers. Uh, still, now it is something that uh, it is working in in the city, and uh, people can 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 have access to this uh, legal aid uh, for free. Uh, uh, what can I tell else regarding the the situation? It is becoming very difficult for us to manage, you know, this situation in in now. So uh, we are making uh, the best to survive because everything is uh, based on, uh, on the uh, donor's support. Uh, we as NGO have some funds for trafficking, but when it comes for domestic violence, it's very, very, very difficult. So uh, despite uh, projects, uh, services we are offering, I should advise and recommend that uh, the state uh, should also support NGOs who really are offering services uh, for uh, uh, victims of domestic violence and especially for uh, reintegration, for a long-term reintegration and their employment. This is very, very important in order to have, uh, to have a long reintegration of the, of the women in the society. So uh, this is my, uh, let's say, information, you know, 
regarding the situation and I would be happy in case you have any question uh, to answer to you. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Diana. Uh, I think it was uh, a really, uh, a really good uh, information and report about everything that happened and it uh, took a little bit more than we planned. So I will just uh, give the time now to uh, another Diana, Diana Malbush from Alton Women's Center from Serbia. Diana, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here, <laughs> Maya, hello. Take the mic, please. Uh -huh. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Diana Malbasha from Autonomous Women's Center from Serbia. Uh, thank you for the invitation and to have opportunity to uh, participate in this forum and sh to share our experience. Uh, I will uh, speak about the uh, situation we had in Serbia during the, the state of emergency that we had in March and April. Uh, this year and uh, about the uh, current state of place in regards to problems uh, women's victims of violence facing, but also challenges that facing women's NGOs who uh, provide direct um, support to women victims of violence. Um, as an organization uh, which provide direct support to, to women who survive violence, actually we recognized at the beginning of, of uh, this pandemic situation, we recognized the risk and consequences uh, that isolation and social distance can bring for women and children uh, who are uh, victims of domestic violence. And we call up the state to implement safety measures in all uh, plant activities uh, to prevent uh, spread of coronavirus. Uh, however, uh, there were no clear instruction or protocols on processing cases of domestic violence or protective measures. Uh, actually, only ministry, uh, our Ministry of Interior made a statement uh, that they will proceed every case of uh, domestic violence regularly uh, and uh, actually very very soon this lack of information and unclear information on unclear procedures was showed uh, uh, its consequences after the state of the emergency declared and uh, uh, actually uh, after that in this uh, uh, first month after the state of the emergency is declared, uh, we in, uh, in our helplines uh, start to receive increased number of uh, calls from our clients, and they address different uh, addressed different kind of problems. Uh, some of them were lack or insuffic insufficient information uh, and in accessibility of institutions. So many institutions reduced the work, working hours, uh, procedures get slower, courts, uh, court skiing were not scheduled or were postponed. Uh, uh, citizens couldn't reach directly to the institution, they couldn't enter, so then they couldn't uh, get uh, uh, information. Uh, they was calling on the, on the line, uh, uh, by the telephones, but some, sometimes nobody did answer, et cetera. So it was uh, quite a bit confusing about procedures and work of the institution. Uh, also, uh, although the Ministry uh, of Interior's, uh, Interior was assuring us that they will uh, handling regularly uh, on domestic violence cases. Actually, data, official data shows that in March this year, when, when we had, uh, when this uh, state of emergency started, that it was drop of 30% in the number of the court prolonged emergency measures. And actually, uh, that was in line uh, what our clients had been telling us. Uh, some of them said that they reported uh, violence to the police but actually the police officers were reluctant to issue emergency measures, especially in those cases where perpetrators was elderly uh, citizens. Since we had uh, uh, in one period of time, total uh, prohibition of movement, especially for elderly citizens. So they, they was thinking that it's not adequate in this period of time to give them a, a emergency measures to uh, evacuate them from their home, etc. And it, uh, 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 of course, put a risk and danger uh, in women who was exposed to violence in, in their homes. 
also uh, groups for co coordination, which uh, consisting of police, uh, social center, and public officer, and which helped us to review all uh, new reported cases and made safety plans for victims, were review uh, in, in March, were review only half number of new reported cases. Of course, also the number of uh, safety plans for door ca cases was much lower. Uh, the other problems was uh, a significant number of, of our clients uh, uh, was uh, made a question about that. It was uh, a respect of court uh, decision that regulate uh, child contact uh, with father uh, they do not live with. So it was in this uh, pandemic situation, in a uh, state of emergency situation, it was not clear. Uh, does the core decision should be should have been strictly obeyed or not? What they sh what mother should do, especially in those cases where they some healthy risk for child or for other other family members, children uh, li uh, was li uh, live with. And uh, actually, informa information uh, mothers get from institution was quite confusing and uh, in contradiction with each other. Some, sometimes they were told that they need to find solution and agreement with ex-partners, how do they will deal with that situation. What uh, was, uh, of course, uh, what was not possible, especially in this uh, situation when uh, we had history of domestic violence, and uh, it was something, this, this whole situation, it was something that uh, violence partners, they, they took advantage of and they was just uh, uh, starting to, to, uh, start to continue to uh, uh, offending or treating mothers if they do, do not, uh, if they not, uh, they not allow them to, to visit the children, uh, even uh, as I said, if there, when there was some health risk, risk and etc. Also, there was a, a large number of uh, social economic issues, financial uh, problems. Uh, women left, uh, lost their jobs. Uh, procedures for social financial aid was slow or it was quite complicated to apply for some social benefits. Uh, uh, some fathers also lost, lost their, their jobs. They didn't pay any money. Uh, uh, mothers was confused about some employment uh, uh, issues for example do they have right to ask for absence from work or to change working shift if they have nobody to take care, care of the children since the children since the, uh, didn't go to the school the, uh, everything was online etc so it was different uh, kind of problems uh, in that period of time that we had uh, as i said state of emergency in in, in march and april uh, currently we don't have any state of emergency, barely we have any measures in effect, in spite of the fact that actually number of COVID cases are, is significantly higher than, than in March and April. And actually some of these problems uh, are not relevant anymore, but uh, some of them still remains, uh, such as uh, court procedures, which are still quite uh, slow and insufficiently effective, which was actually a continuation of disruption caused by, by state of emergency, also some financial, uh, socioeconomic uh, situation, it's, it's not good, etc. But also I want to uh, uh, mention a, a position in which a women's organization, which provide direct uh, support to uh, women victims of violence are because actually they was in the position to uh, to show flexibility uh, in adjusting its work to in these new circumstances and that they had to be had to provide services remotely and uh, without uh, direct uh, contact with clients which, which is which was quite difficult but uh, Actually, as I know, all of uh, women's organizations that work directly with clients managed to do that. But actually, uh, it opened uh, large issues and uh, 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 of a large issue and area uh, that we actually became aware that we need to raise our capacity uh, in. Uh, 
in uh, supply uh, adequate, uh, in having adequate technical equipment, in uh, uh, IT skills, no, knowledge of uh, digital and data security, uh, in uh, developing standards for providing online services, etc. And we, we became aware that is something what we are missing and we need to, uh, as I said, raise our knowledge and capacity about that. And actually it requires sustainable, sustainable funds, which is systematically uh, missing in Serbia when it comes to women's uh, NGOs. For example, uh, a research made by Foundation Queen Atel Queena conducted last year uh, shows that in Serbia only 4%, so only 4% of women's NGO funds are received by state sector. 85% of women's NGOs in some period of time was in situation that they don't have enough funds for their activities and 38% of them were in the risk of closing in some period of time and it's a huge problem. Also, I want to mention uh, uh, that uh, in June uh, to this year, uh, in last open call of, uh, by the Ministry of Justice, not one project for support of women victims of violence or victims of cri crime in general received support by the Ministry. And actually it was third year in a row that the Ministry did not support any NGO which provide direct uh, specialist support to women's victims of violence. And actually all that happening, despite of the fact that uh, Grevio Committee uh, uh, in its report for Serbia, which is released uh, in, on the beginning of this year, uh, urged the Serbian authorities to ensure appropriate funding for women's NGOs that run specialist support for women's victim of violence um, in order to pro provide their sustainability. So that's all for now. I will be happy to answer your question if you have some. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Diana. This was a very, very important information that you give that you gave us for for Serbia. And I, I think that we will be about the situation, but I, I believe that more or less we have same or similar problems in all our countries around in the region. And uh, maybe we can, um, we can afterwards uh, connect to um, maybe future activities altogether, probably online as the situation is now. Um, we will to invite uh, Miss Achila from Turkey. I don't know if I spelled your name correctly, but if you're here, you will correct me. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. My name is Achila. Uh, Anna, I have a presentation. So Achila, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is a hard one. It's okay. <laughs> Anna will probably, I think, Anna. Anna, are you here for the presentation to share? Um, I can, I, I will make you a co-host so you can share your screen yourself. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Anna. You are a co-host so you can share your screen. Thank you. I think you can hear uh, and see yes. my presentation. Okay. Hi again, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Achelia. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm going to share uh, Morchata Women's Shelter uh, Foundation's experience uh, about the pandemic and violence against women in Turkey. And I also want to share what is happening about the Istanbul Convention in Turkey. Maybe you heard before. Um, first of all, I want to start. Um, with the COVID-19 pandemic and violence against women in Turkey. Uh, 
In Turkey, the government doesn't produce and disseminate any data regarding domestic violence and femicides. Despite the lack of data, several reports have been published in national and international media, issuing the increase in violence against women since the beginning of the pandemic. With this growing emphasis, the prevalent public belief was that violence against women increased due to the pandemic. Uh, it was true that women had to spend more time at home alone with violent men where they could have been exposed to violence for 24 hours. However, as women's organizations who provide direct support to women, we were worried that uh, this belief would lead to a perception that the domestic violence cases are due to the exceptional circumstances of pandemic and the dynamics underlying violence against women in Turkey would be hidden. Uh, based on our observations and our experiences with the uh, women during the pandemic period, uh, we were informed that women had limited access to support mechanisms they would need in case they attempt to escape from violence. Uh, pandemic conditions limit the already existing implementations problems of the violence prevention mechanisms in Turkey. We observed that the pandemic was used by the law enforcement officials as an excuse for breaking the law. Uh, women uh, were not accepted to the shelters due to the lack of capacity or they were dis uh, misinformed uh, by the police forces to uh, prevent them from applying to shelter. The police forces didn't implement the article that gives women the right to remove the perpetrator from the house. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, the women's shelters are open but not accessible. Uh, by going against the law, the women who experienced any type of violence other than physical violence were not accepted to the shelters and no alternative was provided to them. Uh, on 3rd April 2020, a statement titled titled Additional Measures Against Coronavirus in Women's uh, Guest Houses. By the way, they don't want to say uh, shelter. Guest houses is more shiny, let's say, uh, was published. And it states that no one was accepted to the shelters except the women whose lives were at risk. The applicant women were asked for a health report as the proof of imminent threat of violence. Although such practices were not new in uh, this field, considering the lack of social support during the pandemic, women who experienced violence faced uh, much heavier pressure to stay in the violent en uh, environment. Um, and uh, we also have observations about the dynamics due to the pandemic. First of all, uh, we observed an increase in the applications from uh, young single women uh, who had to return to their family homes following the closure of their workplaces and student dorms and experiences uh, violence by their uh, family members like their fathers or brothers. They too faced deterrent behavior by the police forces who used the pandemic as an excuse to convince them to remain at the house where they were under attack. Uh, the practices by law enforcement officials create major obstacles for preventing and uh, combating violence, uh, domestic violence in Turkey. Before the pandemic, police would send women home saying, uh, we can't do anything. Uh, but especially during the pandemic, we learned that women were even taken to the hospital for a physical um, uh, were, weren't uh, even taken to the hospital for physical examination. They weren't informed about their rights or the police used deterrent statements to push women uh, to return home. We saw that bad implementations get worse during the pandemic. Uh, they dis disinformed uh, women by saying that the shelter were closed, uh, which is not true. Uh, they and they discouraged them by saying that the shelters were at high health risk. According to the information obtained from the applicants in this process, the police, uh, we can say that the police gave for false information about the 
protection orders uh, saying you have to go to the governor's office, even though this was not true. Another example of uh, the wrong information given to women was that the protection order in accordance with the law, law no uh, 6284 could only be obtained from the police station in the district where, where they uh, reside. Uh, we witnessed that women were forced to run around different police stations and uh, they have to go to their uh, own neighborhood, which is not uh, secure. You know. The poverty of women also, uh, combined with lack of any support for them, forces them to stay in violent environments. Uh, the amount allocated for social support to women was easily shifted to other areas during the pandemic by using the pandemic as an excuse to deny uh, women their rights. Women also uh, were turned down by these institutions uh, by being given false information about their rights. During uh, COVID-19 crisis, with the increase of women's poverty, women found it more difficult to leave the house and to start their own independent and violence-free lives. Many women who reached to us and to other women's organizations asked for financial support. Uh, we witnessed that attacks against women's alimony rights, which systematically intensified since 2018, have continued uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so, what we did as Morchatan? Uh, Morchatan continued its activities uh, at its shelter and solidarity center. We have a shelter independent shelter and a solidarity center. Uh, we continue to have online meetings and interviews the women staying in our shelters since the beginning of the outbreak. Uh, they can use uh, any technological devices uh, at our shelter, uh, which is not used in uh, state shelters, unfortunately. We can continue to receive phone and email applications uh, in our usual schedule from uh, our Solidarity Center. We shared uh, the experiences of women who receive support by phone or email from us on a daily basis throughout our social media accounts and monthly throughout our uh, contact ac accounts and throughout press bulletins. Uh, we continue to organize social media ca campaigns to create awareness regarding violence against women and the necessary support mechanisms for women. We organized a campaign with uh, more than uh, 150 local women's organizations to call for an emergency action plan. We continued with uh, collecting data, monitoring the implementation of the laws and uh, recording them with our reports. Um, what about numbers? Uh, between March, uh, the date more of the staff uh, shifted to remote work, and June 1st, the official start to normalization um, in Turkey, the number of women who called uh, for the first time is, uh, call us for the first time is 286. This data shows a slight increase compared with the number of first calls around the same period of the previous year. So as mentioned above, uh, we underlined that domestic violence in Turkey didn't start during the pandemic and the pandemic should not be seen as the main cause of violence against women. However, the pandemic conditions deepened the already existing problems in the implementation of the vi violence prevention mechanisms. Women had greater difficulty in exercising their rights uh, than before and uh, reached to us uh, with such complaints. And Istanbul Convention. Mm. Turkey became, uh, uh, maybe uh, all you know, uh, Turkey became the first signatory and the first country to uh, ratify the Istanbul Convention. Since the signing of the Convention, the women's movement in Turkey has had to struggle to ensure the implementation of the Convention. Uh, the lack of political uh, will always be in the primary reason why the provision of the convention has not been implemented properly. Uh, the family-oriented uh, policies of the government have always contradicted uh, with the notion of gender equality and thus 
strengthening the family has been chosen over struggling for gender equality. Previous baseline evaluation report on Turkey also indicates how Turkey needs to raise awareness and promote gender equality as the key principle at the center of measures uh, to prevent and combat violence against women. Uh, of course, the government hasn't benefited from the recommendations uh, of us and of the Gravio to enhance the policies and implementations. Moreover, <laughs> uh, the talks on the withdrawal from the convention but was sparked by the conservative men's groups, of course. The ongoing attacks on the vested rights of women is welcomed by the government representatives and the withdrawal from the Istanbul Convention became a public conversation in uh, July 2020. Uh, it was a rumor, uh, it, it was a uh, gossip. Uh, we uh, knew something about it before, but uh, it started, uh, it became a public uh, conversation in July 2020. Uh, the main arguments of the attackers are that uh, the convention aims to undermine Turkish traditional family values and promote homosexuality. Uh, these extremist voices were allied by the government officials and some of them said uh, that the demand of the withdrawal from the convention shall be debated. Uh, you can see some creative cartoons <laughs> on the screen. Uh, their uh, Holy Family and uh, Istanbul Convention is here. Uh, what happened after this attack? Uh, after this attack, we were able to su see public opinion on WOW and uh, Violence Against Women and Istanbul Convention. A renowned research company in Turkey conducted a research on the perception on, of the Istanbul Convention among these discussions. According to this research, 35% of society know the content of the convention, 3% is either opposing or uh, misinformed, and 62% say they did not know. Only 7% 7 7 of the participants are in favor of Turkey's withdrawal from the convention and the majority don't have any specific opinion about the convention. By the way, the research also provides insights about the changing trends on the public opinion on violence against women and uh, it was in a good way. Um, Feminists have been campaigning for the implementation of the Istanbul Convention since its rat ratification. However, the attacks on the Convention created the or urgent need to campaign for it. Not only feminists and women's organizations, a large fraction of the public, including municipalities, civil society organizations, independent media, celebrities uh, from Turkey and all around the world, and artists showed their objection to the plans of withdrawing from the convention, and they produced and posted, posted uh, info on social media, shared, shared statements, showed their support, usually under the hashtag Istanbul Convention saves lives. Moreover, women's organizations organized meetings and protests in public area. Despite COVID-19, uh, women gathered together to defend Istanbul Convention. Even though police uh, tried to prevent uh, meetings and pro protests, women can came together with anger and rebellion. 312 women organizations, women's organizations came together and held meetings uh, to strategize against the back this backlash. Uh, they organized hashtag campaigns on Twitter, sent petitions to the government, letters were written to uh, all MPs explaining the conventions. Um, I cannot say uh, there was a single centered campaign for promoting the convention. Um, there wasn't uh, a single uh, campaign. Everyone produced content from their standpoint. The majority of these campaigns uh, were on social media. Even people recorded and posted uh, videos reading articles from the convention. Municipalities, which are from the oppos opposing party, 
disseminated their message on billboards and other mediums they have access to. By the way, television is the most popular medium in Turkey still. Uh, however, dissident voices don't have any access to, t to TV. Uh, main by the way, mainstream media in Turkey is sized by the government. Although the women's movement is very, very powerful in Turkey, and Istanbul Convention was supported by a large fraction of public, our area of influence is limited and cannot be compared to the government's control over almost every medium to, of communication in Turkey. As the research mentions above indicates, a large portion of society doesn't know what the convention is about, and if they do, they support it. Even women from AKP, especially uh, KADAM, a government-organized non-governmental organization, uh, were uncomfortable with the discussions on withdrawal and even shared their discomfort uh, with the public by supporting the convention. For this reason, uh, teaching public uh, what the convention is all about was the main motivation of everyone campaigning about it. The myths produced by the men's groups have not had the power to influence the public. However, we know that same uh, some uh, government representatives, including MPs, share their views. However, a strong support uh, for the convention might stop them. For this reason, we try to explain uh, the convention by using any medium we have. Uh, lastly, one of the myths about the convention is that it aims to promote homosexuality. Unfortunately, uh, the hatred against LGBTI plus community is widespread. Uh, some of the organizations either claims uh, that the convention is not about LGBTI plus people or organizations like uh, KADAM or women from uh, AK AKP uh, stated how these oppose to that article, Article 4, um, uh, 42. Uh, we Mortatu and many other uh, feminist organizations prefer to tell people that the article is about discrimination and discrimination is a crime. Thank you so much for listening to me. This is from uh, our march. <laughs> Bye -bye. Thank you very much, uh, Achila, for your very, and we got really interesting information. And I believe that we all have, uh, uh, you know, questions that we want to ask. And uh, I just thought about a couple of them <laughs> while listening to you. Uh, we will leave that for, for the end of uh, this workshop. If we have the time, I believe that uh, we will probably. But now I will, would like to invite our last, but not least speaker, of course, uh, Ms. Daniela Kalochi from Viva Jena, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Daniela, are you there? Uh, hello to everybody. I also want to share my uh, presentation. Anna, could you help her with the presentation? Yes, I've made you a co-host, so you can share your screen with us. Jana. Do you found out how to do it? No. Mm -hmm. It's um, a green dot in the middle uh, of your screen that says share screen. Okay. And then you have a couple of options which screen you want to share. Okay. Can you see now? Yeah, we can see your presentation. Yes, we can see it, yes. Uh, hello again. I'm coming from uh, NGO Viva Jena from Tuzla, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, NGO, I just want to introduce uh, a little bit uh, our, our organization. 
it's Center, Center for Therapy and Rehabilitation from uh, Tuzla. My name is Daniela Huremovic, not Kalaci. It's earlier surname. So, um, okay, I am sorry. I'm sorry, Daniela. I just have it in no, my no, email, no, no. so it's I'm sorry okay. for that. It's okay, it's okay. NGO Eugenia was uh, established in February uh, 1994. Uh, can I? Okay. Uh, during the war in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, we need to heal, support reconciliation, and provide rehabilitation for the victims of war, torture, and violence. Since then, a rehabilitation program was uh, Im implemented uh, through the activities in the center, as well as in the communities in the Northeast and Middle Bosnia and Herzegovina. Viva Jena has uh, till now integrated three levels of inter interventions in a psychosocial program implemented through three fields of work, each having a specific, a specific object, uh, objectives, activities, and results. Uh, first level uh, is uh, psychosocial and psychological rehabil rehabilitation uh, of uh, victims of uh, war trauma and uh, victims of do domestic violence. Uh, second level is reconciliation, uh, re reintegration, and prevention. And the third level, level is education, network, working, and raising awareness, and uh, also uh, advocacy. Uh, from 1997, the first victims of domestic violence bega uh, began to talk about their experience of violence. And uh, in uh, 2002, first victim was accommodated and sheltered in safe house. house. Uh, psychological treatment in safe house includes uh, individual psychotherapy, individual body therapy, social legal counseling, uh, medical and uh, hygienic uh, assistance, social uh, educational uh, group work, uh, group body therapy, uh, occupation therapy, pedagogical work with children, fa family therapy and partner therapy. And ma mainly we uh, cooperate uh, with professionals from Center for Social Work. Uh, every year in Safe House, we have uh, 60 to uh, 80 victims of domestic violence. And this year, until October, October, we had uh, 79 victims who were sheltered in safe house, and it was uh, 34 women and uh, 45 children, and it was uh, two um, children direct, uh, directly victims of domestic violence. In uh, two, 2019, in safe house, were sheltered. Um, 65 victims. It's uh, I, I write this just to uh, co compare uh, to see how increase domestic violence in in meaning of uh, sheltered in the safe house. Uh, domestic violence increase in pandemic on all level. We have uh, 30 more intervention on telephone uh, SOS telephone. A direct conversa conversation in center or uh, call through uh, uh, Viber. Uh, problems uh, caused by coronavirus uh, that we in um, Safe House we didn't uh, get any written procedure about intake, uh, how to um, intake victims. Uh, we have uh, earlier we uh, have protocol uh, of intervention in cases of domestic violence and uh, we had a really good cooperation with, uh, with all other institutions but uh, now in um, a period of corona coronavirus um, we had some problems um, uh, we didn't know, uh, do we uh, need to um, 
intake uh, victims uh, and uh, how and where to accommodate uh, victims uh, so they could be separated from the other victims. Uh, testing victims on coronavirus and uh, then accommodated in safe house. Uh, we didn't have any cooperation with service in, in charge for testing. The victims had uh, nowhere to be while being tested and waiting for uh, results. Um, uh, what we have uh, undertaken uh, on our initiative, the Ministry of Health um, sent a letter to all uh, health centers in the area of Tuzla Canton to ensure testing of victims before admission to a safe house. But the victims again had nowhere to, to be while being tested and waiting for results. Uh, so we, um, before, uh, after this uh, crisis, we have uh, cooperation and coordination with referral mechanism. Uh, and uh, through organizing meetings. And we organized uh, also one meeting with the representatives of, re of referral, me referral mechanism um, e uh, in May uh, thir 13, with uh, participants from Ministry uh, of Internal Affairs of Tuzla Canton, Institute of Public Health of Tuzla Canton, Cantonal Civil Protection Administration, Center for Social Work of Tuzla, and Home for Children Without Parental Care. The meeting was organized in cooperation with the Ministry of Labor, Social Policy, and uh, Return of Tuzla Canton, with the aim of drafting the guidelines for the intake of victims of violence to the safe house during the pandemic COVID-19. It was agreed that the victims of violence will be intaked in safe house and placed in special isolation room separated from other women. In building of uh, Vivegene, one room has been adapted uh, room from, um, from for isolation with all necessary things like bed, bed sheet, table, chair, cutlery, tower, things uh, and everything uh, what they need. Uh, victims in room for uh, isolation didn't have contact with other victims in safe house and they have contact uh, with only a few of staff. That also was um, unacceptable because uh, we couldn't accept other, uh, other victims who need help. Uh, while we don't get negative results of testing victim uh, from isolation room. Uh, the testing procedure then uh, generally last, uh, last, last, lasted uh, seven days and it was a very a long period. Uh, now, thanks to all our uh, in, initiative and notes to in charge ministry and the donors, we have adopted three rooms for isolation. In Brighton procedure has been uh, ordered that all new clients who uh, need to be sheltered uh, first must be in isolation for uh, 14 days and then testing. We have deal with Insti Institute of Public Health of Tuzla Canton for testing victims after being in isolation for 14 days. And this procedure of testing lasts maximum two days. And Thank you for uh, attention. Uh, I prepare just a brief note in um, pro with focus on um, um, I need help of in my English. So if somebody could help um, in um, protecting protections of uh, victims uh, in from focus uh, on, on safe house. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniela, for your presentation and for the information that you shared with us. Um, I, while I was listening to all the speakers, I see actually that during this uh, pandemic situation, we face same or similar challenges and difficulties. We also had uh, difficulties with the um, uh, testing of victims, for example, if they need a shelter uh, or uh, just a couple of days uh, place to stay. 
um, there was no no possibility to test them before they were brought to either our crisis center or other shelter centers and it was really difficult to you know we had to of course uh, provide all those means for disinfection uh, face masks for for protection and everything uh, in order to help and support those women who, who you know they don't have any other option any place to stay or um, whatever they need so it was uh, uh, we really faced a difficult period and i i believe that we all are starting to you know getting used to it and uh, starting to find another ways and uh, uh, options to help uh, women that are in need um, and uh, i would like to thank all the speakers for your uh, presentations and uh, speeches and I would like to invite any of the participants, if you have any questions to any of the speakers, we have about 10 minutes more to discuss. If uh, any of the participants wants to ask question or comment something, raise hand, you know, the, the Anna might help with the, uh, I don't see actually the list of participants that if, if anyone wants to speak. I'll, uh, I'll notice that when someone raises their hands. Yeah, if you see a raised hand, please. Yes. No one. Okay, uh, and I would like to say a couple of words because I didn't at the start about the situation in North Macedonia. Uh, uh, what we noticed in our, our crisis center, HOPE is an um, uh, association that uh, was formed in 2000 and uh, formally registered in 2001. So we have next year, we will have a 20 year anniversary. Uh, ever since we worked on um, awareness raising about the problem of domestic violence and violence against women, uh, we uh, implemented many projects and activities. And uh, of course, we were registered at the Ministry of Labor and Social Policy as uh, an association that uh, provides um, um, uh, social services. Uh, this year, what what was really uh, interesting, let's say, in the beginning, in March, we noticed a little decrease of number of calls to report domestic violence. It was really strange, but, uh, you know, discussing uh, our colleagues between us, uh, we thought that probably the fear of the disease was uh bigger than the fear of uh, being abused in in uh, their home so uh but then again starting april uh the number of of uh, calls and reports uh, on domestic violence increased again and during this uh, a couple of months that we were working in this crisis period we had about 30 percent increase in the number of uh calls and reports of domestic violence. Um, most of the, we provide, of course, psychological support, uh, legal help, if uh, basic legal help and support if it's needed. Uh, and uh, mostly uh, um, this was provided through, uh, on, using online tools, social networks, uh, through Facebook, through Instagram, email, uh viber whatever you know we we uh opened all the options that we could to in order to uh, help and support those women that were um in need so um i i i would say that uh, uh we will probably continue uh, we nobody knows how long this situation is going to last but it's uh, definitely affected any aspects, uh, any aspect of our life, all the aspects of our professional life, our personal lives, uh, economic situation. Uh, we believe that um, uh, this uh, pandemic uh, contributed more to 
uh, economic dependence of women. Many of, of women lost their jobs during this uh, crisis period. Um, they would probably need uh, more uh, help and maybe different type of help. So um, my conclusion would be that uh, um, we are, of course, we are all going to participate uh, at this forum by, by the end, by tomorrow. And afterwards, I have all of your uh, contact details, so maybe we can um, contact each other in order to um, organize and implement future activities uh, together. Of course, each in, in our respective countries, but um, still something that is uh, uh, in common for everyone. We uh, have two raised hands. Now, with people who wants to say something. Okay, who raised again? I didn't. I don't see. Dragana. Dragana and then Dragana. We have Esmeralda as well. After that. Okay, That's okay, okay. Dragana, please take the mic. Thank you for for the time uh, and thank you for the very interesting uh, presentations and uh, thoughts from uh, our region. Uh, I just uh, have one my my opinion, but uh, also it's a question to. Uh, uh, each, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, I'm concerned uh, that uh, 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 with with the uh, with the something we saw in uh, in the whole world about uh, women's rights. Now I I'm uh, I'm uh, not sure that uh, we are in the. I cannot believe that we are in the situation that we uh, must fight for the uh, uh, women's rights that I thought we are gained already, uh, like the situation in Poland or uh, even in the USA with something with the, with the or even on, on Balkan, in Balkans countries. Uh, uh, is that uh, uh, really going to happen in the future that we are going to fight with the radical right wings op op opinions uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the future of uh, living uh, and uh, I'm from business sector, but uh, uh, I don't see uh, that uh, in in already in, in this uh, uh, in this sector uh, of uh, work condition uh, about uh, women's rights. But uh, uh, in every other uh, uh, sector of uh, our living, I, I saw that. In uh, what are your what is your opinion on about about uh, this? Sorry for I have. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, thank you, Dragana. Uh, does any of the speakers want to uh, answer this question? And also, uh, uh, the panelist from uh, Turkey. Uh, she said that uh, they are fighting with the with the uh, ac accusation that they are uh, promoting uh, uh, homosexuality. Uh, they want uh, that you waste your time on on the. Uh, 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 discussing about the that some, something like that, not to to fight for uh, right things. I think, if you understand. I, I'm sorry, I can't understand. Uh, you have you uh, you 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 said that you are accused that you uh, that the Istanbul Convention or or the work of NGOs in uh, uh, Turkey uh, promote. Uh, homosexuality, if I understood correct, what, what do you say? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I think that, uh, that uh, right-wing op opinions uh, want that you waste your time, that you uh, uh, might, uh, 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 that, that you can uh, uh, work something uh, uh, better for women, not uh, to, to fight that, something like that. Yeah, okay. Um, may I start maybe? Maya, is it okay? Yeah, okay. I just want to say yes. something. Mm -hmm. um, we cannot uh, separate uh, these rights, actually. You cannot say it is not important uh, to the hatred against LGBTI plus people. Uh, it is also really very important and uh, yeah of course we yes. want to say something about it too um, and also 
uh, about the uh, backlash uh, about women's rights all around the world. Uh, I already said a lot of things about it, but uh, maybe I just uh, can add that um, we know that it is not just about uh, Turkey. It is not uh, just about uh, our state's uh, conservative uh, male <laughs> view. And uh, we uh, actually, we were already uh, Wait, waiting for uh, this kind of attack. It's, uh, it, it, it was kind of a uh, helper for us. Uh, it helped to us because uh, we were already together with all uh, feminist, all uh, women organizations, and uh, we were uh, get together uh, as soon as possible after uh, this attack came. And uh, really being uh, prepared uh, for this kind of attack is really very important, just uh, not just for Turkey, for uh, all of us uh, from all around the world. Uh, maybe I just can say this because, um, yeah, it, it can came, it can uh, look very strange, it uh, can look very impossible. But uh, five years ago, if you asked me uh, something about uh, backlash about women's rights in Turkey, uh, I can uh, I cannot believe I I couldn't believe it. Maybe I don't know. Uh, so it is important to uh, believe it. It is true, and um, it can came to you too. I think. I, uh, Esmeralda has raised her hand as well. Uh, so, Esmeralda? Yeah, thank you, Anna. Thank you very much for, for letting us uh, be part of the forum and at these wonderful workshops. I was going around on workshops, but in this one, um, since the, the beginning and since the start, uh, what I see, uh, I, I'm working with the Gender Alliance Development Center, and from years now, uh, among other things, we are monitoring how the referral mechanisms against violence, domestic violence, are going in Albania in several municipalities. And what we have shown on the pandemic area, I'm calling it pandemic area, is that we had something to 30 person to 50 person uh, phone calls on the national line for counseling from girls and women uh, saying that they are violated. And uh, on the other hand, we saw that we had a low number of these women announcing on the police stations or near the uh, or near the coordinator at the at the municipality and in parallel it goes with the the, the women that the women that, and girls that are working on the uh, textile and garment industry for shoes and clothes we have women that they aren't being paid we have women that are infected by covid we are women that can't go work because they can't. Uh, they haven't. They have a. They haven't a place where to leave their children, and we have women that are sometimes going work, going to work uh, infected. And as I see personally, is that I think we are turned back for the women's rights, because if we had done something till. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm calling, uh, maybe I can say, in Albania, if we had done something uh, till March, because in March we have this uh, pandemic outbreak, I think we had done some steps back and we need to, to work a lot to go when we were at March and then go full for, for, for the women's right. And as seen uh, on the region too, and reading the media and yes, our-, could our you put your, Could you put your microphone? But yeah. Yes. Okay. And yeah, I'm sorry. I'm with the mask because we are at the office. And uh, as I, as I was saying, uh, being uh, and seeing what's happening on the region too, and not only, I think that more work should be done for the women rights. And I agree with Atelia regarding the 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 the, the, the their protests about the rights of the homosexual, uh, I'm sorry, I, I can't say on short way, uh, persons because they are a human rights and we need to raise the voice for everyone 
that believes and thinks that it's, uh, it's uh, undervalued from the society or from the state. Thank you very much. This was just my, my comment because I had some couple, two or three questions, but I think I have received the answer during the colleagues' uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Esmeralda. Thank you. Uh, yes, I, I, as I heard all the speakers and now the comments from everyone, oh my God, it's finished. Is it finished? Yes. It's, oh. Uh, oh, I thought the workshop finished because something showed on my screen. <laughs> okay, but I think we need to end now uh, since the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to I would like to thank all the speakers for their input in this uh, in this uh, workshop and I, I uh, would like to say that we will for sure stay in touch and uh, uh, keep sharing information best practices and experiences in order to improve the situation and uh, as Esmeralda now said because we went a couple of steps back now we need to move forward and I would like to thank Anna for your assistance in everything that is uh, technical and I apologize for my technical difficulties at the beginning. Take care everyone. Bye. Bye. See you at three. Bye.